the diversification of this economy is very, very important. And in fact, we are late. Because like what I said, since when I got to Lagos in 1979, people have been talking about diversification of Nigeria's economy. Uh, how do you diversify your economy? You have to diversify your economy and make it great through agriculture and manufacturing. Manufacturing actually, you know, creates a lot of uh, jobs, creates middle class, and also transform countries. These are the areas that I think we need to really focus on. But, you know, how do you diversify an economy? You know, I mean, uh, I'm going into manufacturing that makes sense and also makes it uh, inclusive uh, growth. Then you need to actually do what you call backward integration or import substitution. Our economy is great because we have a local market. Because when you look at it, the economy of Asia is mainly focused on export. But we have a domestic market. This is a country with about 200 million people, apart from the rest of the ECOWAS market, where our imports last year was almost $47 billion. It is not sustainable. We cannot have 200 million people growing at an average, I mean, uh, uh, population growth at about 2.7%, and then we're importing most of the things that we're consuming. I think we need to really, this time around, be more serious so that we just don't keep talking about diversification, diversification, diversification. And it has been very elusive. I don't know why. It is possible, but people are not really focusing on that. So I think we need to really look at, okay, fine, how do we fully this time around, the kind of people that I've seen here, I'm sure we'll find solutions as to how do we actually make our country to be producing things that we consume. Because if you look at it today, uh, with the kind of projects that we're doing, we're importing almost every single thing apart from few iron roads, which is a pity. We don't have steel industry, we don't have medicine. So entrepreneurs like my big brother here, Jim Ovia, you have to diversify also and leave a bit of banking. <laughs> I'm come into a little bit of uh, risky, but also a very good area, which is manufacturing. And I think what we need to do to make it successful, and look, I know you gave me three minutes, so don't worry. He has been going around me, so and he didn't stop my big brother, but you are trying to stop me. <laughs> yeah, he didn't stop him, but you know he's trying to stop me. So, you know, everybody is scared of Jim, so that's why. <laughs> so really, uh, we need to look at this. In, are these things possible? We need to, uh, to look at reducing of uh, cost of doing business. Cost of doing business can actually affect everybody. I mean, to tell you the truth, government lost so much money last year in, uh, uh, in uh, the traffic logjam of Apapa alone. We as a company, actually our three companies lost over 30 billion in terms of, uh, you know, profit which also the government will collect less taxes from us. So we need to look at infrastructure, we need to look at uh, power, because without power, there won't be growth. Because that is what will actually propel a lot of these uh, SMEs to actually you know, be almost everywhere, in Kano, in Jos, in uh, uh, you know, Aba, in Patakot, all over the place. But we need to really have power so that entrepreneurs can risk their capital and go back and reclaim their factories or, you know, I mean, warehouses where people have turned their factories into warehouses and churches to now make them factories again. It is possible. It can be done. So the, is it impossible to diversify? No, it's not impossible to diversify. But, you know, there are quite a lot. We need three things. One, 
we need low interest rates, which I think will achieve something like that today. Number two, we need long-term funds. Number three, we need support by CBN to back that up with foreign exchange. And I think my governor, that is governor of Central Bank, my advice is that rather than us to focus more on imports, we should reduce that and do like the way Ethiopia did. Ethiopia will give preference to people who will bring in machineries to produce rather than now importing to consume. I mean, at a point, my heart actually bled when I realized that, yes, it was announced by customs that, yes, our revenue, I mean, customs collected 1.3 trillion, 1.35 trillion as import duties. It means that the economy is not working. If the economy is working, customs shouldn't collect that much money. We should produce more. In fact, it should be the IFRS that will collect that much money, not customs. So I think we need to really diversify and fully make sure that yes, we have what you call manufacturing base where we'll uh, produce whatever. You just imagine 47 billion, even if we are now going to produce goods worth 30 billion. Can you imagine how many jobs we'll be able to create? There will be quite a lot of jobs. And apart from that, People are saying that, no, it is impossible. No, it is not that it's impossible. You see, we need to make sure we make these things happen before it gets to a time where we will not even be able to, even with the money, you will not be able to, uh, you know, satisfy your own demand. Let me give you, for instance, today, can you imagine with the congestions or the port, if we are to import 25 to 20, I mean 27 million tons that we consume in Nigeria, is it possible? No. But today, all those terminals that we opened, which we were ex uh, importing cement, we have now built two terminals to export cement. And I can assure you, Nigeria by this year will be the highest exporter of cement in Africa. So it is possible. Uh, what are we doing going forward? What we are doing going forward was also the support of Central Bank. We've been able now, we are building 10 uh, 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 plants of rice, which by end of this year will be able to produce a million tons of rice. And we're also supporting the agricultural side. So that is on, on uh, rice. On petroleum products, by the time that we start our refinery, Nigeria will be the largest exporter of petroleum products in Africa. For the first time this year, by the grace of God, Nigeria will be the largest exporter of fertilizer in sub-Saharan Africa. And that is all being possible by backward integration, which is the import substitution. We will be the largest exporter of Second to South Africa, only largest exporter of petroleum product, which is polypropylene, polyethylene. So you can see that, yes, it is possible, but we need to make sure that, yes, we have. But what we need is to make sure that we put up what you call uh, government consistency in policies. And now we need to really look at all this uh, support that has been given by Central Bank and Co. With this diversification will not be possible without the support of Central Bank to give foreign exchange for people to now buy machinery and set up factories rather than importing goods to consume. Thank you. Manali, an example of what we should be.